It's like that. Yeah, I, don't I don't know. It's all technical. Like it's, it's on me jeans. They'll be able to see it. It'll be great. Oh dear. Okay. Let's do it. Hi everybody, I'm Natalie Sisson and welcome back to a really special edition of the Suitcase Entrepreneur Podcast because this one, if you're watching the video, is being shot as a video live on location with Chris Ducker at Location 63, the first co-working space in Cebu, Philippines. That was my little plug. Plug over. Yes. And if you're listening on the audio, you should definitely come over to suitcaseentrepreneur.com forward slash live to watch the video and grab the show notes. So today, why I think it's so special and exciting is that we're here with Chris, who loves the word sexy, as do I. <laughs> and we think that virtual freedom is particularly sexy. And we're going to talk all about many topics in 25 to 30 minutes or less. We're going to talk about the power of outsourcing and how to get started, because Chris is the guru of that. We're also going to talk about how Chris has actually built up a really, really impressive brand online through a lot of different types of content creation because I think he's doing an incredible job. So welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited, one, that you're here, like at Location 63, and number two, that it's the first ever video that you've done. Video podcast is awesome. I know. And I'm not going to spend the whole video like this because people will be like, I don't... No, no, no. We'll just talk directly into the lens, won't we? Yeah. So um, do you want to tell people about your story? Because... You actually are a legit business person as well. I, I say that with the utmost respect. A lot of people, I think, listening to this podcast or watching this video think that a lot of digital nomads really aren't legitimate business people. Chris has a physical business and a digital empire. So do you want to maybe tell people your story? Of course I can. No problem at all. Well, yeah, we are sitting in one of my three physical businesses. Um, one of those three businesses is a little uh, more online than the other two. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I've got about 250 people working for me here in the Philippines. It's a lot. It's a lot of peeps, but it's good fun. Um, and uh, I started uh, my first company, which is a, a corporate call center, uh, about seven years ago. Then uh, three years ago, I started Virtual Star Finder, which is our VA recruiting service. And then... Um, Three and a half months ago, I opened up this place, the co-working space, and um, and that's what it's all about. That's what I do. I've lived here in the Philippines for 13 years. I'm nothing special. I'm just a hard-working, hustling sales guy that happened to sort of fall forward a few extra times uh, <laughs> and, and just was able to create some good stuff at the right time, really. But I mean, it's hustle. That's what it's all about. Yeah. It's working hard. He's a great, he is a salesman, and he's also a very talented marketer, as I've noticed since being here. And he has a great sense of humor with some of the funniest English terms that I've ever heard. So. Should we do, do you want me to yeah. drop some of those? Yeah, on, should we drop on, some of those? You know what I mean? Yeah, I can talk like that if you want, mate. Right yeah. out of a Guy Ritchie film. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, you've got to be like a diamond geezer to float around London and not get into trouble with the old pom pom, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but we're not, sort we're not going to do any more than that. No, that'll, that'll be good. <laughs> so, um, do you want to talk about maybe your transition? So, you have these real legit businesses here which are obviously going really well hmm. let's focus first on can't do that slapping the hand not good for audio the outsourcing aspect so you run virtual staff finder um, and you help people find amazing virtual assistants um, and do you just want to maybe talk a little bit about why it's so important to have a virtual assistant because a lot of people listening and watching are at that kind of precipice of wanting to hire somebody but feeling very like oh Chris tell me how to get started so it's time that's what it is, I think, above and beyond everything else. It, it, it's, it's the ability to be able to leverage your time as an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. We, um, you know, we're, we're a strange breed, us entrepreneurs. There's, there's nothing else like us on the planet. No, no breed comes close to the weirdness that we convey on a daily basis. And it, it, it's, it's like, it's, this is the way I look at time. Time is our most single most valuable commodity okay if you think about money all right that buys us things that gets us things we invest it we spend it we lose it we money will come and go it comes and goes every single minute of our day as a business owner um, but time once you've invested or you've spent your time it's done forever it's gone it's finished it's over and done and, and, and finished with so my take on this whole virtual assistant, building a virtual team, becoming productive sort of type of topic is that as an entrepreneur, if there is anything that you can do, regardless of what that anything is, 
that you can build more time and leverage your time better as a business owner, you must do it. You are mental if you don't look, I mean, you should be committed, literally. You're right, geezer. <laughs> no, you know, you're, you're crazy. If there's something that you know will help you get more time in your business and life, and you're not partaking in that activity, then you've got a screw loose as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. yeah. Definitely. So, yeah, let's gain back your time through a virtual assistant. Uh, just talk maybe through, if somebody was here today and they're like, Chris, great, you've got the know-how. What do, what's the first thing that I should do to get started? I want to hire a virtual assistant to take off some of these more important tasks, but tasks that I shouldn't be doing. What would you suggest? Well, we've talked about our three list of freedom before. Mm -hmm. um, uh, was that a little video we did for your, your, right? Or was it for your book? It was for your book. Yeah. It was for your book. So we'll go over that. It's not out yet. That's not out yet. Shh, that's si <laughs> that is serious secret stuff. But we're going to give you this little exercise because yeah. it really is the exercise that I give everybody for when they're getting started. Cool. And it's called the three list of freedom. So you get a piece of paper, you draw two lines down it, you create three columns out of that. And you create these three lists. The first list is a list of all the things that you physically just don't like doing. Mm -hmm. like you, you, you know, when you think about doing these tasks, you procrastinate, they go from one day to another on your to-do list and you never really end up doing them because you hate them so much. Might want to puke a little, as Chris said last puke. night. Yeah, I did, but I didn't want to use that one again, you see? No, didn't I think, want you, to do I think that. you used a different word. I did. It's right. Vomit. It's be out for a while. Yeah. Vomit in your mouth yeah. and swallow is exactly what I said. <laughs> Let's not beat around the bush. <laughs> so that's the first list. The second list is a list of things that you feel that you can't do. And there are a lot of things that we can't do, even though we we suffer from that superhero syndrome that I talk a lot about. You know, there are people out there that can do a lot of things better than us. And then the third list is a list of um, things that you feel you shouldn't be doing as an entrepreneur. You could be spending your time better in other areas of your business, whether it be strategizing for growth or spending time with clients or whatever the case may be. So that then becomes almost those three lists become a blueprint or a roadmap per se to physically get started. It's a brain dump that then puts you on the road to working with virtual assistants and building a virtual team. Um, and it's really just a great way to be able to just kind of get that first one or two or three job descriptions together based upon a role mm -hmm. and not a task because you're hired for the role, not for the task. Good um, and you sort of just, you, you go from there and you just take it all from there. So what with Virtual Star Finder, uh, what do you say are the most common types of tasks that your clients are asking the virtual assistants to do? Well, about about 70 to 75% of the VAs that we source for clients through Virtual Star Finder are what I call a general VA or okay. a GVA. And GVAs basically are kind of like, or, or they become the right arm of any entrepreneur. They, they are... They're, they're, they're literally, you can't live without these people. They'll do everything from, you know, manage your calendar to manage your email, uh, update your blog, do your social media, transcriptions, handle your travel itineraries. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. They're a general admin type, multitasking, online savvy kind of VA. Um, and, uh, ah, your right arm. Yeah, you literally. Or left or arm if you're left-handed. Your right foot. Yeah. Like that. See on video. So you guys listening in on podcasts, you can't see what we're doing with our feet right now. So if you want to see what Chris is doing with their feet right now together, come across the suitcase. Go across the com forward slash. There you go. So yeah, so that's the kind of role that we really source for above and beyond everything else. And that is that you know that's genuinely the slam dunk role. Every entrepreneur on the planet should have a GVA because they enable you to then be able to let go of all those tasks on a day-to-day -day or a weekly basis yeah. um, so you can focus on other areas of your business. Definitely. And let's talk costs for a little. I know Chris discusses all of this over on his blog, which we'll talk about at the end of this, but a lot of you out there always say to me, well, Natalie, it's really expensive to get started, like, aren't, um, you know, virtual assistants or assistants in real life, $30, $40, $50 an hour. Chris is going to dispel that myth right now. What can somebody expect to pay for a basic entry level virtual assistant full time for a month? 400 bucks. Ta -da. US. It's $100 a week. You are and, so worth it. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and a lot of people think that's low and that you're not looking after the VA properly and all that sort of stuff. Here in the Philippines, you know, the. the you know, the minimum wage is probably just under $300 a month. 
So, you know, not only are you giving them more than that, but you're also allowing them to be able to work out the comfort of their own home um, and, you know, have the flexibility. A lot of them might be uh, mothers. Mm -hmm. You know, they've got to pick up and drop off kids at weird hours and stuff like that. Uh, so it gives them the flexibility and, and, and the chance to be able to make a good living um, yeah. without having to, you know, commute for three hours a day and, and all the rest of it. So mm -hmm. $400 is, you know, and we're talking to somebody with, yeah. you know, a, a year or so's worth of experience in that GVA role. Um, but I mean, you you know, put another couple of hundred dollars on there, mm -hmm. which ain't a lot of money. Um, and you've got someone who's got two to three years of experience, uh, put another two or 300 bucks on it. And you've got someone that in the United States would be making three to three and a half, maybe $4,000 yeah. a month. So it, it does make a enough. big, big difference to what yeah. you can achieve day to day. Now, uh, we've also talked about this as well. We've been here on location for a while, so we've had lots of discussions. But I think when most people are starting out, they will use a tool, something like Odesk or Elance uh, or various other sites where you can then go out and try and hire a virtual assistant, um, find the best person, go through the job descriptions, go through all the bids for that job, um, sort them out, interview them, etc. But what I like about what Chris does with Virtual Star Finder is that they do all that up front for you. Right, so you say, and this is this is for those of you who have um, a little bit of money and pay a, a small upfront fee, they do all the work for you and then go and source your perfect fit and then you work with that person independently. So after that, there's kind of no hand-holding really, but they've hopefully fitted you with the perfect person for your role, which I really like for all those other people who are very daunted by having to hire and source and interview people themselves when they just want the virtual assistant to start. Yeah, and I mean, and, and really the service in general came about because of time. You know, the, the right. general aspect of having a VA helps you buy more time, for want of a better term, um, and inject more time into your day-to-day -day life. But then finding that VA, if you do it on your own through a job posting site, it will take you a long time. And then you have to look at well, how much is one hour of my time worth compared to what the fee is for Virtual Star Finder? It's a one-off fee that you pay mm -hmm. us. It's not like a, a monthly recurring thing. I mean, you pay your VA directly mm -hmm. every month, but once we've hired, you know, helped you hire the person, we're out of the picture and it's up to you yeah. to then look after them. So it's only a one-time fee for us. And um, in the almost three years that we've been in business, we've hired just over a thousand VAs. I know. Or, or helped a thousand VAs get work, so, so cool. it's phenomenal. Um, which averages out at around about sort of just under one a day or something. Yeah, it's incredible. Um, but yeah, but then but going through the service saves you that time as well. Um, and depending on how much you charge, if you're a consultant or whatever, you know, per hour you work out, it's probably going to take you a good, you know, anything between five to ten hours, depending on how pedantic you are yeah. to find somebody. At least for the first hire. Well, yeah, for but sure. I mean, I know even I even know some people like I, who will remain nameless <laughs> to um, you know protect the guilty uh, because he was ridiculously guilty of doing this. Big internet marketer making lots and lots of money online, still doing all of his own sourcing, all his background checks, all his interviewing, all his you know, filtering out and everything. And he came to me and he said, I don't know what to do. I haven't got the time to, why are you doing this? Like you're making a boatload of money. Why are you still doing this? Like you gotta get other people to do it for you. So he became a virtual staff on the client and he's found several VAs to us now. So it, it, it's just about leveraging your time. I can't say that enough. If, you, yeah. if there's anything you can do to get more time in your life as a business owner, you've got to do it. Yeah, and for those people listening or watching, um, does that sound good when you say that? It does, it's so exciting. You're going to do this all the time now, aren't yeah. you? You popped your cherry with me. Yeah. With I your video never cherry. Going back. <laughs> so sexy. I'm doing video and audio. So, common virtual assistant staffs, staffs, I should say, common virtual assistant tasks that you can outsource are, for example, we were saying blog post optimization, SEO, keyword research, um, researching other stuff for you helping you with your emails before you even delve into your inbox in the morning for them to clear out a lot of those. So you're just focusing on the good stuff. Uh, what are the, some of the more common ones that you love? Now content. Content. Love it. Content oh. editing, optimization. So we're love talking it. about transcripts for podcasts. I can get somebody, to, I will get my podcast editor to do this after and even some of the video editing as well. So, and then transcription coming out of this. 
optimizing this blog post. I mean, there's just so many things that they can do that will take you a lot of time and not the best use of your time. Unless you really, really enjoy doing those things, it's best to well, outsource. And content marketing now is so big. It's kind of like the the new buzzword that social media was sort of like four to five years ago, right? Yeah. So the content marketing is so huge now because I believe as an entrepreneur myself that we've gone back to where we were sort of 50, 60 years ago where, and I use Bob the Baker as an analogy when I talk about this quite a lot, <laughs> Bob the Baker is a fictitious person, but I'm pretty sure somewhere on the planet there's a baker called Bob. It's probably it's from just, London, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, but yeah. whatever, it doesn't Bob. matter if he's from London or not. It's, Anyway, it's Bob and he bakes bread for a living. And I believe we've gone back um, to that era of 50, 60 years ago, 70 years ago even, where you are more likely to buy your daily loaf of bread from Bob the Baker two blocks away for an increased amount of money compared to what you would pay if you walked another block and bought it from a big supermarket chain mm -hmm. for less. The question you have to ask yourself is why do we go to Bob and why are we happier to spend more money on his bread? Let's say the bread tastes equally identically great, right? Mm -hmm. Why are we happy to go and spend more money with Bob and why not just walk, walk, you know, walk the extra block and get 30% off the price? The reason is this. The reason why we're happy to spend extra money with Bob is because we know Bob. We know his family. We've got a relationship with him. We, uh, uh, we converse with him on a regular basis. He is a real person, he knows our name, he knows what bread we like, we know, he knows roughly what time we're gonna turn up every day to buy our loaf of bread from him. And when we turn up, he's got a big smile on his face and all the rest of it. That's, you know, that's the, the, the P to P philosophy mm -hmm. that I call it the person to person. Forget about B to C or B to C or business to business, business to consumer. This is P to P. This is person to person. We want to do business with real people one more time. We become social all over again. But now we are absolutely spoiled because of things like social media and things like that. I mean, like, I don't know about you, but I check my Facebook status before I even get up to bed in the morning. I do with my phone. I think it's something like 86% of women check Facebook from their bed. So yeah. I am a woman, he obviously. A woman. I, yeah. And you well, I could just say I was. I, I could just say I'm 14. I'm the other 14. percent I'm the man, right? Yeah. I could, but yeah, never mind. But what I'm getting at is we've become incredibly social again. That P2P element is there. I think Gary Vaynerchuk calls this philosophy the small town rules mm -hmm. or something along those lines. Okay. And um, because of that, content marketing is now the way forward for anybody doing business online. Content marketing is the way forward creating great original content, having it consumed, and then making it shareable. Yeah. And we allow all those things then to kind of encapsulate itself into a genuine strategy to build our businesses. And I have brick and mortar businesses, yet I have adopted that content marketing philosophy and I've been able to grow my brick and mortar businesses yeah. via the internet. Um, right. So it works, it doesn't matter whether you're an online entrepreneur, or whether you're an offline or a more traditional entrepreneur, content marketing and, and repurposing and leveraging that content really works. It does, and I want to switch gears now and we're going to talk about how Chris has built a phenomenal brand online. But I'm going to switch angle on the video as well, that's going to be my switching. <laughs> so for those of you listening in, um, we've just changed the camera around a little bit. Not only are we switching gears, we're switching camera positions. Does that make you yeah. feel better? Yeah. Okay, great. This is digital online editing as we go. I honestly have not moved an inch for the last 20 minutes. My bum has gone numb. <laughs> we are sitting in very cool bean bags here at Location 63. Yes, we I'm are. a big fan of bean bags. Bright orange ones. All right, so Chris, not only do you now have like one of the number one business podcasts in iTunes, and it's only just over two months old, uh, which makes me very jealous actually, because <laughs> mine's like a year old and I should have listened to his tips earlier. Uh, you also have a great blog. Um, and that's also quite new, right? Uh, well, I mean, the, 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 the blog itself as a platform is new at chrisducker.com, um, but I've been blogging for three years. So a lot, a lot of the content, um, which was over at Virtual Business Lifestyle, went with me. About 60% of the content came with me to the new domain. So okay. it's not like I was starting like, completely from scratch right. in terms of you know, uh, 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 content or, or an archive. But yeah, I mean, the site has only been running since September last year, put yeah. it that way. 
And now Chris does a number of things really, really well online. Uh, one, I think you use your personality, humor, and English accent to great effect. So people love that. I know you North Americans out there are listening, oh, I just love his accent, it's so sexy. Well, they either love it or they hate it. Yeah. It's like Marmite. If you don't know what Marmite is, Google Marmite and you'll see what I'm talking People about. People love it or hate it. That is very true. It's a great analogy. Yeah. Um, on top of that, your your design of your site is excellent. We were just talking today about people, including myself, who are stealing things from it because it's so well laid out. That's so cool. I love um, that. Yeah. Because it'll make me change it as well. Yeah. Because I don't want to be it. Like, It'll be the gold yeah. standard. He'll keep changing. Um, and go to chrisducker.com. And actually have a look at even Chris's homepage, which is a really, really fantastic opt-in. It's a great example of how to be very, very clear on what your offering is and entice people to join your list. Uh, on top of that, as I said, he now has a super popular podcast. It's almost new. You do videos. You do videos from the car, kind of on location like me, except with a higher quality video and a better microphone. So I always love seeing how Chris does that. Plus, he then uses his virtual assistant team to do a lot of the editing and optimization. So he's essentially become like this content creation king. You're able to put a lot out. Um, and you really, I think you do a great job as well of repurposing content. Do you want to talk about how effective that's been for you in terms of growth of your platform? Well, this is the goal, you see, because it's one thing to create a video and then put that on your blog and on your YouTube channel, but that's the only two places where that video as that piece of content will be found. Exactly. Right? So, and we, you know, regardless of how much, you know, work you put into the video or whether you just shoot it on the spot or whatever, the fact of the matter is, is that you still put X amount of work into that. And as a business owner, it's taken up time out of our day, so we need to maximize that time. So with the right team in place, you can then go ahead and repurpose that content. Even a four or five minute video clip can be repurposed in a multitude of ways, mm -hmm. uh, which you then can be found on a number of different platforms across the internet. Mm -hmm. So as an example, I will shoot a five minute video clip that five minute video clip will then be turned into a five minute audio clip, which can then be uh, embedded on a website, or it can be um, uploaded to like a mini podcasting platform such as SoundCloud or something like that. Okay. This is not necessarily a podcast episode, but it's a bite-sized podcast episode, okay. right? A bit of audio, like a yep. one, you know, one or th top three tips to using video to promote your business online. Five minutes, boom, 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 boom. Mm -hmm. So you've got a video, you've got an audio. You can then have an infographic designed off the bullet points from that video. Yeah. You can then have a PowerPoint or a keynote presentation put together and put, put up on, on SlideShare slide yeah. or, or DocStock or something like that. Um, you can then go ahead and have that video or that audio transcribed and put onto your blog as a blog post. Exactly. Or put into an ebook yeah, and given like away a as a free download or a white page or a cheat sheet or something like that. Mm -hmm. You can pull two or three quotes out of that and create some likable or tweetable images to share on social media you know, networks. So, you know, out of one piece of content, you've got like six or seven pieces of content mm -hmm. which are then picked up and viewed and found and remembered and linked to and from all over the internet. And that enables you to be able to not only obviously be found in more places other than just your primary YouTube channel or, or, or blog, but it, you become remembered because it particularly, the one thing I've been complimented on a lot, um, and this is the one thing I will only ever really blow my trumpet on, my own trumpet on, because I've worked so freaking hard at it, is it's not the only thing, but it will give you that. <laughs> is, no, but the, in terms of online and the way I build up my brand, this, yep. this is the one thing where I will absolutely blow my own trumpet on that consistency of the look of my brand. Mm -hmm. I don't care where you find me, if it's on my blog, my Facebook page, my YouTube channel, my Twitter page, anywhere online, you will know that you're at a Chris Ducker platform. The same colors, the same logo, the same font style, the same phrases, the same keywords, everything. Mm -hmm. And I've just been really consistent across everything that I've done. Um, and I have been complimented by, by some pretty good, solid online marketers mm -hmm. as well. But that, that really is a tip that you can, and, and I, I say this actually, and you smirk, but I say this because I'm not an online marketer. Like I've become an online marketer, but I don't feel like I am one because I'm more mm -hmm. of a, and I honestly don't You're feel a like genuine that. genuine marketer. 
Well, that's and that it. That translates well online because you understand the power of community and how to engage with people. That's the big thing I for wasn't me. Wasn't smirking. I was no. genuinely high smiling. five, baby. She was smiling, not smirking. Yeah. Um, that was a high five for you listening in. That wasn't me <laughs> smacking around the face or anything like that. I just want to clarify that. Um, but no. But ultimately, that's you know that's the way I repurpose the content and I build it up and I you know I I publish on my blog two three times a week max. Um, but then. You know, a podcast episode that will go up next week will become a SlideShare document three weeks from now. Yeah, that's absolutely. the way it works. You'd have to do it all at once as well. You so you see what works and what doesn't work, uh, and then you know. And if you've got a longer video like this video we're shooting here, you can end up cutting this up into four different videos of five minutes a pop, and then targeting different keywords based upon where we are in our conversation and then be found on YouTube for four different keywords instead of just one thing, all off of one piece of content. Ooh, I want you to break that down a little bit more. Okay, so you shoot a piece of video, yeah. let's say it's 20 minutes long, and let's say you've talked about four different things. Yeah. So we can talk about consistency of brand so far, mm -hmm. we've talked about content repurposing, yeah. we've talked about virtual assistants, mm -hmm. and we've talked about uh, Bob the Baker. Yes, we did. Peter P, right? So there's your four bits of content right there. You cut those little chunks out of the video, two, three, four, five minute clips, whatever they end up being. You research based upon whatever piece of content you want to create. So for instance, we're talking about the consistency of personal brand online. Mm -hmm. You find out you know, a decent keyword through the Google keyword tool, or mm -hmm. I think YouTube has a keyword tool, but I don't think it's as solid That's and as robust. Yep. Um, and, and then you, you target that keyword you do a little description, a link back to your website, and you put that four, three, two, five minute clip up on YouTube, and people will then find you for personal brand consistency online, or whatever keyword you end up picking. Right. With Bob the Baker, it's probably not a good idea to title your video Bob the Baker, but you can say the, you know, the, the, the person to person business philosophy, or something along those lines. Natural born marketer. Yeah, and this is all off the cuff, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't, yeah, yeah, we yeah didn't no, it do. is very off the cuff. So that's what it is, it's just about breaking down different things, and then you get so much more, you get so, yeah, you, so much more legs out of what you're producing. And we work hard to produce content. I mean, just the time that we're sitting here talking right now is time we're investing. Yeah, and, um, yeah we've and got a lot of other content today as well. Yes, we've we been have. like multitasking and using our time, leveraging it really, really cleverly. Yep. So you've also got to take opportunities, which I think Chris does a lot of. I know when you were speaking at Blog World earlier this year, he also got in a couple of fantastic podcasts with some big names. He also happens to be in a bromance with Pat Flynn, which definitely helps. But Everybody keeps saying the point that. is, <laughs> I think the point, the point is, is that you we're just we're there. just good friends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tell Pat's wife that. Um, but the point is, you were there, you were interviewing people, you were speaking, and you were really using your time, and then you were able to put out those podcasts at a yeah. later date. I think you did some other videos there, and then yeah. you put those up at a later date. You had multiple blog posts coming out of your experience there, and what you've learned, but also what you talked about. You repurposed your talk from Blog World, put it up on your own site, people were asking after it. I mean, that's a whole lot of content creation in your marketing calendar based off one event and some serious hustling. Yeah, and the, the hustle is, is really the, I think, above and beyond all the systems and the processes and all that stuff, the hustle is what it's all about. You either want to do it or you don't want to do it. Yeah. Things are not going to fall in your lap. Don't think that that's going to happen in business because it freaking doesn't. You've got to work your balls off and you've got to, or well, if you don't have balls, your ass, <laughs> one or the other. Can I say balls on your podcast? Yes, you can. Okay, just have. Just have. <laughs> so it's staying in. But no, the, 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 the message is divine. The message is work hard and ye shall be rewarded. My oh goodness, we just went from illicit to religious <laughs> in one, one podcast episode. Yeah. All right, I'm going to touch on something before we wrap up because I think this maybe you don't get asked as much is some of the difficulties and positive outcomes of working in a different country. I'm, I'm pretty fascinated about that. So Chris has been over in the Philippines for 13 years. You also do a lot of traveling, goes back to England a lot speaking in America, etc. But there must surely be some difficulties here because I know in my time here that there are. <laughs> but you live with it. So what would you say maybe are some of the things that you've seen as an upside, but then some of the challenges of being in a completely different country for you? I think um, when I first got here, it, everything was just all marvelous. <laughs> everything was nice. Yeah. Everything was um, great. It was a new environment, new people, new cultures. 
new roads to walk down, new people to meet, and it was just all... Because there's no pathways here, so it's like, definitely the, the, roads well, that you Well, walk. actually, in Cebu, there's not many sidewalks, but in, in Manila and Makati, right. particularly. I mean, like, you, you could walk... See, here's the thing. A lot of people think of the Philippines, particularly, as a third world country, and it is a third world country. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you right now, there are places in Makati, which is the business district up in Manila, which is the capital of the country. There are honestly places in Makati where you could walk, I mean, huge with sidewalks. Yeah. It's like being in LA, Beautiful. and I am not exaggerating. Yeah, really modern. Right. I know when I came in through the airport and I went to the Makati district, I was like, I feel like I've just stepped out back into, yeah, the yeah. US, like one of the most modern cities. And I was like, I'm pretty <clears throat> sure we're not seeing the real Manila here. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's the real Manila for the Gen Y, you know, generation. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, but you know, once you get out of that main business area, it does become a little bit more funky. Um, and down here in Cebu, it's even a little bit more funkier. Um, but you know, I, I think and actually, it's a really good question. I don't think I've ever been asked that question yes. ever in a in a podcast interview. And I've been interviewed by tons and tons of them. So I I think let's look at pros and cons. The pros are that number one, it's a lot cheaper to build and run a business from a third world country such as the Philippines or a developing country. Uh, such as the Philippines. Um, I have 250 plus staff. I have three floors in a five-story building and there's no way I could do that back in England as quickly with as little investment. Uh, it's just no way I would have done it. Yeah. So that's the pros. Number one, cost saving wise, a lot easier to get a physical business up and running. Um, another pro is the talent of the people. Uh, the Philippines is, I think, the third or the fourth largest English-speaking country in the world mm -hmm. in terms of mass size. Um, there's 90 million odd people here. Yeah. Uh, not all of them speak great English, but the very large majority in the city areas do. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, with that cute kind of semi-American accent. They got a little American twang yeah, going on. They have. Yeah, that's it. I and like it. Um, because of that, it, it enables them to, you know, communicate great uh, in a great way to people overseas. Um, and just talent wise they're just hungry to learn Filipinos are born and raised with more of an employee mm -hmm. mindset rather than an entrepreneurial one so they make great long term members of staff um, and I've, I've had um, I've got people that have been working with me for pretty much since day one of my businesses many people so they're very loyal, they're very hard working, very trustworthy um, and you know they're, they're, that's all the pros right there mm -hmm. great weather fantastic coral reef I mean if you're into scuba diving or snorkeling the Philippines is great and all that stuff so the downtime is there the business as aspect is there if you want and it's just a great place to come and do business and, and live and, and learn and grow cons the disrespect towards time right. drives me freaking mad still after 13 years um, they have this thing here in the Filipino Philippines called time. Philippine time or Filipino time, which basically means that they're always going to be at least 15 to 30 minutes late for anything to the point where they do literally set their watches 15 minutes fast to make sure that they're on time to appointments and they're still freaking late. Yeah. So that's, I mean, obviously there are, you know, there are exceptions to the rule. Uh, a lot of my staff, for instance, in fact, pretty much all of my staff know if they're late, for anything that's kind of like the beginning of the end mm -hmm. with me because I don't believe in Filipino time even if I've been here and I'm married to Filipino and all the rest of it I, I don't believe in it I think it's incredibly disrespectful to not turn up on time to anything whether it be a birthday party or a business meeting so that's that's the one thing that drives me crazy about it here um, the other thing is you know communications in terms of tech uh, although the internet is becoming better and better and better and better with every single passing year mm -hmm. here, uh, it's still very much in development mode. Uh, and unless you spend some serious money on your bandwidth, you're going to get a pretty crappy internet connection. Oh my god, are you ever. Which is why I love being at Location 63, because you have fast internet here. And right. I've seriously been struggling with it here for uploads of videos and things. It's, just oh, it's been, brutal. It's really tough. It's very, brutal very is tough. A better word. Brutal is the only word to describe. It's brutal. It took two, hour, two and a half hours yesterday to upload my video. And how long was it? Uh, it's a 30 minute video and it was okay. quite a be decent size, but it should have taken 20 minutes. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, so 
with my businesses, I spend approximately 15,000 US dollars a month okay. on bandwidth. And the reason why I need wow. to spend so much is because the call center obviously runs on VoIP. Mm -hmm. So we need more bandwidth for the VOIP. Um, but then, you know, during the daytime when the call center is more of a skeleton crew, everything's piped down here to the location switch three, which is why there's so much bandwidth in here and the right. speed is so fast. Um, I think the average connection here is around eight meg, anything between five to eight meg. Uh, whereas, you know, an average connection at home will be around one meg. Right. Yeah. So it is a problem. Um, it is getting better and better and better and better. It is avoidable, for want of a better word, if you're willing to spend the money on it. But then again, and there's a lot of locations, particularly where virtual assistants working, where the big fat fiber optic connections that are available are maybe not available mm. in terms of the pipes haven't been laid. and. Right. You know, stuff like that. So, yeah, the time aspect drives me crazy. The uh, the internet, you know, the communication side of things drive me a little crazy. And just the general lack of organization in general. Um, and I'm not going to get involved with government and all the rest of it. That's neither here nor there. But the fact of the matter is that I look around and I'm like, you just do this, this, and this, and that is going to be so much better. Mm -hmm. But there's just not enough uh, initiative to do this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. um, but you take away those negative aspects of the country and you look at the positive ones, and I believe that the positive aspects far outweigh the yeah. negatives. Far, Which far Which is obviously out. why you're still here. Yeah, and otherwise it wouldn't be. Wife and yeah. yeah. Um, I think you're right, though. A lot of Southeast Asia, from my experience as well, is like that. That's part of the beauty of what I love about these countries mm -hmm. is the more relaxed nature, the fact that people aren't in a hurry, um, the fact that the rules aren't so in your face, nothing so anal, and you don't have to cross all your T's and dot all your I's, which is which is lovely when you're living in this kind of environment, but I'm sure if you were doing business, the locals would be a lot harder. And just to prove that point, actually, Chris and I ran an outsourcing workshop here to locals talking about how to work with an overseas boss. Uh, I think we started at 10 a.m. on the Saturday, and there were some people here, but Several people were still turning up at 11 a.m. I couldn't believe it. Like we were half oh, through bulk, our presentation. The bulk of them turned yeah. up and at so, 11. Uh, yeah, it blew my mind. Like, it blew my mind. Yeah. yeah, and it was actually my PA. Her name is Jam. She turned around. And she said, "Next time, we should have registration at nine. We tell them it's all going to start at nine, mm -hmm. and then we actually really start at 10 o'clock. That's a great idea, yeah. and we're going to be doing that. That is a great <laughs> idea. So thank you so much for sharing those insights, because I think it's really good for people to learn the pros and cons of any country, like any country in the world, whether you're going to be based there for business or pleasure or both. I think it's really important, and, and you've been living here, so you have a really great insight. More so than me, you've just come along for the few weeks, and I'd have probably a different attitude. So yeah, thank you for sharing that. Um, More than welcome. Where can people find the wonderful Chris Ducker online? ChrisDucker.com, baby. That's what it's all about. <laughs> He's also all over Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. But yeah, all your sites. Love are there, Twitter. So yeah, we well, love. I Twitter. mean, what is there not so to love good. about something that you can communicate with people all around the world in less than ten seconds? Why shouldn't you love that yeah. in today's economy? It's just. Yeah. I don't understand. Oh, I don't like Twitter. Can't get used to that. Don't understand. What's there not to understand? Just bloody send a tweet. Do you know what I think Twitter's revolutionized brevity and conciseness in your message? I believe you're right. Yeah. Verbose people have really struggled with it, and I love it because it gets your point across short, succinct, brilliant. Boom. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. I'm so stoked. I'm your first video. I can't wait to see how many... Uh, you know like how many comments or like what kind of feedback you get from people because it's always it's yeah. weird when you've been doing something one way for a while and then you kind of flip the switch a little bit and do something another way this is exciting i mean I'm, i know you're excited about it i am too because yeah. i'm kind of like involved so aren't a little I? bing bang jig of joy we could do that without like ruining the audio can you hear that that's bean bags baby <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for watching SuitcaseEntrepreneur.com first video podcast. And you can find us live at SuitcaseEntrepreneur.com forward slash live and check out this episode and the show notes. And more importantly, this video. Done. Cool. <laughs> I hope it recorded. I don't think I'm going to be able to get up. I'm stuck I'll here. Give you a, I'll give you a hand. <laughs>